Hello, once again, this is a quick video to talk about um, something that we have uh, a capability of that allows us to kind of not be lazy, but just work once and then um, not have to worry as much. So today I'm going to talk about user-defined data types and add-on instructions. Both are ways to save work um, long term and help alleviate confusion. Just a quick quick bit of a terminology. If I go into a program tag, you will see um, you will see a whole bunch of data types right here. And some of these data types have multiple bits embedded in them. So let's look at a counter for a second. If I create any counter, there's a preset uh, dent, an accumulated dent, a count up, count down, done, over value, under value, setup. So anytime I create a counter, these things populate. Same thing is true with a timer. If I have a timer, a, pre, a preset, timer accumulated, enable bit, uh, timing bit, done bit, all pop up, and I need those in order for a timer to successfully run, whether it's an on delay or off delay. Because that's where the process stores the information that you're using in that timer. So how long am I running? What's, when do I shut off? Et cetera, et cetera. You know, I have the same is true for the function block timer, except it has more bits. But again, they have a certain data type. And in that data type are embedded dents and bools. Well, those are Alan Bradley defined data types. You have the option to do user-defined data types. If you look right here along the side, user, okay, user-defined data type, and I'm going to clear that, you can go in and create your own data type. By doing right clicking and new data type. So if I have a process that I'm utilizing a lot, and so like so for instance, say I have a bunch of motors in my plant, and I always have the same bit. I, you know, I'm making memory bits and start bits, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that are attached to HMIs. But I'm always having start stops and enable bits for a motor. Well, I can do, you know motor bits and put a description in these are the general bits for starting and stopping a motor and now I can Come down here under name, data type, description, and say start. And just call this a bool. And say this bit starts the motor. I can add another member and say stop. Call a bool or a bool. This bit stops the motor. And I can hit a motor. This bit, bit enables motor. So now, I have a data type. Now, one thing that this is nice about is when we do produce and consume tags, I can only really transfer dents or user-defined data types. So this is a good way to transfer information over a network. So I'm gonna hit apply and it's got, it gives you the size, hit okay. And now if I go under user-defined data types, you see motor bits. And I'm going to go in my main routine and tell you what, just, just because I'm going to go in here. 
and, or uh, let me undo that. I'm going to go to my program tags, and I'm going to create, say, feed motor. And in my data type field, I'll type in my motor bits data type. And now look what happens underneath. I have a feed motor start, feed motor stop, and feed motor motor bit. So not a done bit or enable bit, but I have a start bit, a stop bit, and a motor bit. And so now, if I were to program in my main routine, Take a, take a look under my program tags, feed motor bit, start, or move that over there, move this over here. These are general bits for starting and stopping a motor. This bit starts the motor. Yeah, and notice all my description gets imported. So if I can go into my feed motor again, stop. I just saved a bunch of work, didn't I? And now, does this look like our ceiling? And but plus, it gives me a description about all that's going on there. And so, if I'm in a big plant, isn't that something that I could utilize? Pretty straightforward. So now, if I download to program. Download it. These are all bools. It works just like our normal seal and circuit, but now I have specialized bits that I can utilize until I'm blue in the face. So if you have an advanced process, this is something that's really good to use. So now if I toggle this bit and toggle this bit, now I have a start. See that? Just works just as normal. Something else that's really good for user to find data types is actually putting your time in. What do you mean? I'm going to right click on user to find data type and put a new data type in. And I'm going to call this, shall I say, time. Current time. And what, because you know in the processor it saves everything that you need, correct? Like year, month, hour, so that you can do calculations. But say I want to know what my date and time is, I can create a data string that will do that for me. So for instance, year, and just make sure these are all dense. Current year. I'm not gonna put in descriptions, this you know, um, year, month, dent, day, dent, hour, dent, minute. See a pattern? Because what I am doing is going to set up a, a way to store my time but not have it be just in some random, some dents that I don't know what they are, but something that I can refer back to at any time, some microseconds. And how I'm gonna do that, so here's time, and I'm gonna hit apply, hit okay. So now I have a time thing, is how I'm gonna do that is there's a, a, a command called get system variable, GSV, or get system value, sorry. I'm going to make that bigger so you can see it. But basically, I can go into the processor's memory and bring out stuff that's already there that I can just monitor. And there's a lot of things. If you want help on this, right-click and go to Instruction Help. And something will open.
that will show you basically all the different types of attributes that you can get from your system variables. And if you go into like right down here, GSV set system value objects, you can alarm buffer, the controller name, all this stuff. You can get that from the controller itself. You know, safety, if the serial port's active, um, or in this case, wall clock time. Um, that thing that I was typing in, I didn't memorize it. I went to here and I was able just to put this in for my uh, user defined data type. Or if I want to apply daylight savings time, I can use a, a set system ver value and say set, do that, or offset for um, other things, or just figure out what time zone things are. So I'm going to get rid of that for a second. Oops. Close that and show you how this works. But first, I need to go in my program tags, make a new program tag. I'm going to call it time and make the and make it time. So look, time, year, time, month, time, day, time, hour, time. Minute. So now I have, I have a place to put these. And once if I go into my go into the my my class name. First and foremost, where am I want to pull my data from? Let me go wall clock and wall clock time. Let me go attribute. I want to do daytime, and where I want all this stored, I want that into. Guess what? My time value. But I got to be in the. It's got to be the first value like of the array. So now with no errors. And so now once I download this. Yes. Hey, the current year, date, time, the current year is 1998. Oops. That's probably the right, right date and time. But let me go into my tags. And you'll see right now the current time. Month, January, et cetera, et cetera. Probably because I haven't synchronized my time. Let me go up to my controller properties. So if I click on this button here, this is my controller properties. I'm going to click on this. And if you look here, date and time, yeah, it's pulling the right date and time. Well, if I, I'm lazy, I can click this button, and now it matches what date and time I'm recording this. And hit OK. And now watch what just happens. 2017. Month, September, day 21, hour, minute, seconds, milliseconds. So now if I have a process that only wants to work on the weekends or only wants to work every seven days or only wants to run certain days of the year, if I want to do scheduling, now I can do this in the program. Kind of cool. And it's just using this, you know, get system variable uh, and uh, user defined data type. Um Really, uh, I'm going to do a new video for add-on instructions, but because I think this is pretty good. So user-defined data type with get system variable and how to set wall time and how to set up your own little process with just using user-defined data types. Thank you. Have a good day.